بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹی ڈائی ویڈ دی لاس ٹاپک آف دی کورس دی نیو ٹاپک واتس دیٹ دی لپلاس ٹرانسفورم سو فرسٹ آف آل یو نو ایکسپٹ مائی اپالوجیز بینگ اے لیٹر لیٹ آئی بلیو یو ہیو ایڈ اے ٹو ویکس بریک اینڈ آئی ووڈ گیو دی ریزن دی ریزن از دیٹ فرسٹ آف آل ایٹ وال رمضان so uh, i did not had that sort of a stamina uh, 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 in ramzan and the next thing is then we, uh, a week uh, goes in eid uh, the preparation of eid and then in eid so one week goes like that the very next week was uh, our exam our uh, final semester midterm exam so one week goes in that and then i you know three or four days two three days a break and then two three days coming back on the track so today it's uh, it's uh, wednesday i believe second of june and i'm recording the video i'm back you'll get this video on friday inshallah okay laplace transform now one thing i said this is the last topic of the course this is based on our perspective the utp shower course contents does not include the z transform if you're a utp shower student watching this video you 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 have this as the last topic i will be covering the z transform so most of my viewers are indian so you have this z transform i know this in the course contents of signal and systems we will be covering z transform over here anyways coming to the topic of the laplace transform so two important points two important points this that i've written the whole thing we'll discuss them one by one but you already know this from the beginning okay there's nothing new written on the board laplace transform is the generalization of continuous time fourier transform point number one laplace transform is the generalization of continuous time fourier transform this suggests that laplace transform is only for continuous signals you may write it somewhere you can include it over here as well that the z transform is the generalization of discrete time fourier transform fine how is this the generalization the generalization we will see but you know is very well in the in the fourier transform case we took an exponential signal and that was what exponential was a complex exponential exponential of negative j omega t which means that the co it, the complex part the exponential complex part only had the imaginary part it does not had any real part right so this generalization means over here we would have a real and imaginary both the parts okay and one thing is uh, you will be hearing the background noise a little this is because of the fan i'll try to remove it but if it does not get removed so i'm sorry for that because the weather has got uh, got hot so so we, i i although have uh, reduced the speed very much but still it would have some noise anyways the second point laplace transform is the continuous time fourier transform of a signal multiplied with the real exponential signal we'll see this point you just need to write it down we'll prove them we'll see the proof of each of them anyways going back to continuous time fourier transform this was relation x of j omega is exponential uh, is negative infinity to positive integration x of t into exponential negative j omega t with respect to t we have a j omega over here which suggests what that the continuous time fourier transform is evaluated on the imaginary axis on the j omega axis and i have already told you this is evaluated evaluated on the straight j omega axis where the discrete time fourier transform it's evaluated on a unit circle the complex exponential signal x of t is equal to exponential of st when applied to an lti system with impulse response h of t gives you an output that is the complex exponential back multiplied with some scaling factor 
why is this this is because of the eigenvalue property of this exponential signal that the ex complex exponential signal is the eigenvalue of what of an LTI system we have s in the power this s is generally complex s is generally complex where this sigma denotes the real part omega denotes the imaginary part the sigma is also called uh, you would see in the control systems maybe most probably that this is the damping factor you call it the damping factor also this sigma is the damping factor so this s is generally complex this is sigma plus j omega but whether this s is complex it's purely real or purely imaginary anything power to the e which means a complex exponential signal is an eigenvalue of an lti system so in the Fourier transform case we saw where s was purely imaginary that was an eigenvalue of the system over here we have s to be complex having both real and imaginary parts this is again eigenvalue of the system so we have the eigenvalue back and the eigenfunction eigenfunction is h of s that is the scaling factor and this of h of s this h of s is known as the transfer function in mathematics and over here from the signal and systems point of view we would be calling it as the system function so this is again an important thing a, 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 a special a particular thing as h of t h of t is a special response that is your impulse response similarly over here this h of s is a special transfer function in the signaling system we call it transfer uh, system function which basically is an eigenfunction of an lti system so now we know that your y of t of an LDI system is the convolution of the input with the impulse response and again we know the properties of convolution we know the properties of of LDI systems we know the properties of a Fourier transform if we apply the convolution property what do we have h of s is negative infinity to positive h of t into exponential of negative st dt this is basically the Fourier transform with what with s in place of j omega we have s where s has now both real and imaginary parts this is what this is a laplace transform relation this is a laplace transform relation but this is not for any general signal x of t this is for a particular signal h of d for a general we see it anyways it would be like this but if you have a look if you have a look so in place of a j omega we have s where i told you this is the generalization of the Fourier transform so generalization generalization we've seen over here what's that over there we had the purely imaginary part that was on the j omega axis over here we have both the real and imaginary part which is denoted by the s otherwise this you could say the same integration the same signal the same exponential the same integration with respect to t this is what i meant by the first point you have understood it h of s is the system function system function h of s is the laplace transform of the impulse response h of t how would this have been the wait i have not written a point i am telling you i am telling you or wait i have written it over here no problem so you have understood that the system function h of s is the laplace transform of the impulse response h of t and how do you get this point that this is the laplace transform by using the notation s instead of j omega where this s also has a sigma involved okay the next the next thing is if in the continuous time Fourier transform we saw that the sigma the real part was zero so the complex number s was equal to purely imaginary so 
what do we have over here if this real part becomes zero the system function reduces to what the system function reduces to what you know this I will write it till here till that yes tell me hurry up when s is purely imaginary the system function reduces to have a look over here yes the system function reduces to the frequency response of the system to the frequency response of the system frequency response of the system and you can write it over here if you have an h of j omega you have a negative infinity to positive h of t exponential of negative j omega t dt isn't this the relation of the Fourier transform we've already seen isn't it the relation we've already solved examples on yes it is so when this is purely imaginary system function reduces to the frequency response of the system fine now getting into the Laplace transform into the mathematical form of a general signal x of t's Laplace transform there's nothing new there's nothing new what do we do we modify the Fourier transform and how do we modify it so if we calculate the Fourier transform on a complex frequency plane this s basically is a complex frequency so if I, if we evaluate the Fourier transform on a complex frequency plane rather than the j omega axis that's called the Laplace transform that's it simply that is it what's the difference the difference is that it's the same Fourier transform but now evaluated in the overall plane it's the same Fourier transform but evaluated on the overall plane if you restrict it to only the j omega axis let me take this call please so I'm sorry for the disturbance okay it was my father anyways what was I talking yes so I was talking uh, that basically this is the same Fourier transform but Fourier transform is only restricted to the j omega axis whereas over here you could take the overall plane I would draw that plane it's of a very important it's very important so let's let's have some mathematical discussion over here as well if we put what if we put x of sigma plus j omega and now we take the Fourier transform x of t exponential of negative sigma plus j omega into t with respect to t negative infinity to positive x of t exponential of negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t oh, we don't need to write that point over here I don't need that point this is what it is this is what it is So this was the same Fourier transform relation but instead of only j omega I put sigma plus j omega and I know now that this sigma plus j omega is equal to s so I could say that x of s is negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative st with respect to t and this is what I was interested in this is the relation for the Laplace transform for any general signal x of t have a look 
The integration limits are from negative infinity to positive infinity, which means it includes the negative side of the axis as well, the positive side of the axis as well. This is called a bilateral Laplace transform. We'll see in the upcoming examples probably as well that some limits are from 0 to infinity, some are from negative infinity to 0. Those are called unilateral Laplace transforms. This is on the overall axis, this is called a bilateral Laplace transform. Anyways, so, so I believe I should wrap the board before getting into the next discussion. The complex frequency plane I mentioned over here. So what's that? So the complex frequency plane is like this. Where the horizontal axis is the real part sigma. The vertical axis is the imaginary part J omega. So this Fourier transform is calculated on anywhere on this plane. Okay, let me remove the board before getting into some more discussion. Okay, so x of t is an input and the signal x of s is its Laplace transform. So in pair form, in pair form, how do I write it? I write it like this x of t with a double arrow or, or that half arrows you know with an L and over here I have this x of s. This is what do I write? I write general shorthand notation. Coming back to these two points. So, proving point number one, what do I have? The continuous time Fourier transform is a special case of Laplace transform. Can I not write it like this? I can. How do I write it? Why have I written it like this? Because in the continuous time Fourier transform, we have S to be purely imaginary the power of exponential and the Laplace transform we have the s to be a complex number where it has a real part it has an imaginary part so what can I write for s equal to j omega for s equal to j omega I have x of j omega is like this x of t exponential of negative j omega t the integration is with respect to t or i can write it as if i have the laplace transform x of s which is this i have the laplace transform which is x of s and I calculate it at s equal to j omega this will give me what this will give me the Fourier transform of the signal x of t and isn't it like this it is like this you can write it for yourself Laplace transform evaluated at x s equal to j omega gives you the Fourier transform of the signal if I write it if I write it Laplace transform evaluated at s equal to j omega give is the same or gives you what Fourier transform of x of t that is the proof of point number one that the Laplace transform is the generalization of continuous time Fourier transform fine now coming to point number two Laplace transform is the continuous time Fourier transform with this and that generally we would say we would say the relation between Fourier transform and Laplace transform what would be the relation between Fourier and Laplace transform so x of s is this thing
Now at if s is sigma plus j omega, we know this right that s is sigma plus j omega. So I could write that x of sigma plus j omega, I don't need it basically at this side, but anyways negative infinity to positive x of t exponential of negative of sigma plus j omega t with respect to t x of t exponential of negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t have a look have a look if I take this signal x of t with exponential negative sigma t combined I take it combined together so can I not say that the left hand side is the Fourier transform of this green signal I can say because the integration is negative infinity to positive we have a signal x of t x1 of t let's say multiplied with exponential negative j omega t in the ratio is with respect to t is and is the Fourier transform if I write it like this you know negative infinity to positive x1 of t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t isn't this the Fourier transform isn't this the Fourier transform it is so can I not write like this that the Laplace transform x of s Laplace transform x of s is the Fourier transform of what of a signal x of t multiplied with a real exponential signal and that is what is the second point I have proved so this is the general formula for Laplace transform and the general two tools two points that I wrote this is point number one this is point number two Laplace transform evaluated at the imaginary axis that is s equal to j omega gives you the Fourier transform of x of t fine and then what uh, if you are evaluating the Laplace transform of x of t equivalently we can say that we are evaluating the Fourier transform of x of t multiplied with a real exponential signal negative of this and that that is it z transform is the generalization of discrete time Fourier transform we will see that maybe that's it for this video see you in the next one very soon inshallah thank you very much for watching See you in the next lecture very soon. And I said, I believe I said that once. Okay, so till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.